both serial communication in 8051 and uh, this kind of uh, data or this kind of communication is provided by one peripheral inside uh, 8051 and that is UART. So, we will discuss how to use this UART and how to configure this UART, but before that we will start with uh, what is a communication and uh, the classifications of the communication. Okay. So, here communication is nothing but transfer of data between the two entities or two systems or two points or two machines. So, that is called as communication and it is classified into two types here, one is parallel and the other one is serial. In case of parallel, multiple bits are transferred at the same time through multiple channels, but when it comes to serial, a single bit is transferred at a time through a single channel. So, that is why it is called as a serial communication. Okay. Now, let us see how a serial communication looks like and how parallel communication looks like here. This is a serial communication where a sender and receiver is connected with one channel where the sender always sends the data and here the receiver always receives the data that is this uh, through this particular channel. Okay. But when it comes to parallel communication between the sender and the receiver, you can see multiple channels. So, these multiple channels will be carrying multiple data bits at the same time as you have 8, uh, eight channels here. So, 8 data bits are transferred at the same time. Okay. So, when you look at the advantages and drawbacks here, serial communication advantage is it is simpler and uh, the cost which is used for implementing this kind of communication is very less. But when it comes to drawbacks of serial communication, here the speed of transmission is very less. Okay. But in case of parallel, uh, parallel communication, the advantage is speed of transmission is high, but the drawbacks are here as this system looks very complex, therefore, here the cost you or the cost uh, for implementing this kind of communication is very much high and uh, there is a chance of noise uh, to degrade the message. Okay. Now, let us see the transmission types in serial communication that is simplex, half duplex and full duplex. In case of simplex, the transmitter and receiver are connected with a single channel and this channel is always unidirectional. Therefore, the transmitter will always transmit the data and the receiver will always receive the data through this channel. So, that is why it is called as unidirectional communication. And when it comes to half duplex, here at a time one machine can transmit the data and the other machine can receive the data. Here we have a bidirectional channel, but simultaneous transmission is not possible with this channel. Why? Because we have only one channel, but it is bidirectional. And when it comes to full duplex communication, here we have two independent channels, one is for transmission and the other is for receiving. So, that is why it is called as bidirectional communication and the simultaneous communication is also possible with this full duplex communication. Now, let us see the transmission modes in case of serial communication. There are two transmission modes, one is asynchronous and the other one is synchronous. So, in case of asynchronous transmission, uh, both the transmitter and the receivers are connected to different clock sources, but the clocks, the clock value should be same. Why? Because synchronization, synchronization is done only with those clocks. So, here both the both the clocks for transmitter and receiver are independent, but when it comes to synchronous, transmitter and receiver are synchronized with a same clock. Why? Because in case of synchronous transmission, uh, one device would be generating the clock and the other device would be receiving the same clock which is generated by the other device. The device which generates the clock is called as master and the device which receives the clock is called as slave. So, we are as we are giving only one clock signal, then both are synchronized with that clock signal. Now, uh, we will see how asynchronous transmission goes on, how a data or a character is transmitted. In asynchronous transmission, character by character is transmitted and every character would uh, would be going through one process that is called as framing and the output of this process is called as a frame. Okay. Now, in this uh, framing process, each and every character is added with some additional bits. They are start bit, stop bit and there is one uh, optional bit that is parity bit. Okay. So, here start bit indicates uh, the receiver that it is the start of a character and here stop bit indicates the receiver that it is a end of a character. 
so with the help of these bits the receiver and transmitter gets synchronized okay now as you can see here initially the transmitter uh, assuming that the transmitter on the right side and the receiver on the left side it has transmitted the start bit then it will transmit the 8 bit character okay and then an optional parity bit so we uh, if it is required then we can use and then a stop bit okay you can see with an example here where my character is a which is represented uh, with ascii value so ascii representation requires totally 8 bits so initially it sends the start bit and then 8 bit message or character and then the stop bit now here start message as well as stop bit is nothing but a single frame okay now here technically the start bit is called as uh, space signal and the stop bit is called as a mark signal now as just now i said uart is the peripheral which is used inside the uh, controller for providing asynchronous communication why because the name itself says that a universal asynchronous receiver transmitter where it can provide only asynchronous type of communication and uh, it will be acting as an interface between the processor and the serial port okay and here this uh, uart will be receiving uh, the data in the form of bytes from the processor and it converts that into serial data and uh, transmits to the peripheral and when it is receiving the data from the peripheral it again receives in serial form and then converts it into byte form and then given to the processor so that is why it is called so called as serial to parallel or parallel to serial converter now here uart supports ttl voltage levels which is of 0 to 5 volts but whereas if you are if you want to increase the length of the communication then noise gets introduced into the channels so in order to reduce the noise we have to use a protocol for implementing the communication and that protocol is called as rs232 now here rs232 would be representing the data bits with higher voltage levels so as the voltage levels are increased therefore the length of uh, transmission can also be increased okay so we have to follow this particular protocol whenever we want to increase the length of the transmission or receiving okay now here in case of a uart it will represent a binary zero with zero volts but in case of this protocol rs232 it is represented by a voltage in between 3 to 25 volts and binary 1 is represented by 5 volts in uart and uh, rs232 is going to represent the same binary 1 Uh, with a voltage in between minus three volts to twenty five, that is minus twenty five volts. So let us see what is that protocol RS two thirty two. Here RS indicates recommended standards, and uh, it was designed by EIA Electronics Industries Association. And protocol uh, basically means set of rules. So whenever we are using this protocol, we have to follow the rules which were uh, designed or which were which were designed for this RS two thirty two protocol. And those rules are. it specifies two rules one is voltage specifications and the other one is signal specifications okay in case of voltage specifications as you can see it will represent logic 1 with minus 3 to minus 25 volts and logic 0 with plus 3 to plus 25 volts and it will also uh, specify some signals we'll see what are those and uh, these kind of signals are also called as negative logic signals and ttl signals are called as positive logic signals why because here logic 1 is represented with negative voltages and logic 0 is represented with po positive voltages so that is why these are these are called as negative logic signals let us see what what kind of signals that rs232 is going to specify so it will be specifying uh, nine signals here okay data carrier detect receive data transmitted data data terminal ready signal ground data set ready request to send clear to send and ring indicator okay now out of these nine signals or nine pins in serial communication we would be using only that is in asynchronous serial communication we would be using only three pins those are receive data rxd transmit data txd and then signal ground so these are the three signals which we use in case of asynchronous communication and uh, as i told you that uart will be supporting uh, positive voltages and but but uh, but the processor would be understanding or the communication uh, through this rs232 requires the voltages to be represented in negative form so in order to convert the positive voltages to negative voltages we use one ic and that ic is called as max232 now this will convert the negative or positive voltages which are coming from the 8051 to negative form 
and the negative voltages which are coming from the RS to the two to the positive form. So that is why we use max to the two. Assuming that if I am connecting 8051 controller to the uh, CPU of a computer, then the computer CPU supports plus or minus 12 volts, but whereas 8051 supports only 0 to 5 volts. So I cannot directly connect uh, the voltages of this PC to this 8051. Why? Because it damages the IC. So in between the PC and 8051, I would be using max to the two, which will convert the incoming voltages into that is negative voltages into positive voltages and positive voltages into negative voltages. Now let us see the registers which we actually uh, need to access for using this particular peripheral. Okay, so S buff which is called as serial buffer register and uh, the length of this register is 8 bits and uh, if you if I want to transmit any data that data must be placed into this S buff and if I if I want to receive any data then the received data must be stored inside this S buff register. Okay, so if you want to transmit, then you have to place that character into the S buff, and if you want to receive the data, so if, if any peripheral is sending the data, that would be received inside this, or that would be stored inside this S buff. From where we have to read the data into a variable. Okay, so S buff serial buffer, and the length of this register is 8 bits. Okay, and uh, we have to represent every character only by using ASCII values here. Now we have one more register that is SCON and it is bit addressable because I can address individual bit without affecting the other bits. Okay. See SCON is nothing but serial control register. As you can see there are totally 8 bits. It is an 8 bit register. Okay. Let us see the importance of each and every bit. SM0 and SM1 are used for selecting a particular mode. We will see that and SM2 for multi processor communication. So if, if two processors or if more than one processor is connected to the system bus then the communication between the processors is uh, is done by by programming this particular bit to logic one and then only the processor is going to recognize the request from the other processor and ren if you program this particular bit to logic one then uh, we then the receiver gets enabled if you are programming it to zero then the receiver gets disabled so that we cannot receive any data from the external world TB8 and RB8, these two are the bits which are used for holding the ninth bit during the uh, during the modes that is mode 2 and mode 3. Okay, and TI. TI is the bit which is used for representing when a character is transmitted. After trans after uh, after transmitting a character, this particular bit will become 1, indicating that a character has been transmitted successfully. Okay, and this RI represents the status of the receiving uh, the receiving data uh, that is after receiving a character and after placing that character into the S buff then this RI would become 1 indicating that one character is received and that is stored inside the S buff. Now these are about the modes that we have mode 0, mode 1, mode 2 and mode 3. Mode 0 is called as a 8 bit shift register and here baud rate is calculated with this formula that is oscillator divided by 12 and mode 1 is called as 8 bit UART set by timer 1 and we will see what is the formula and uh, mode 2 9 bit UART and mode 3 is also 9 bit UART and these two modes that is mode 2 and mode 3 are used in case of multi processor communication. So basically in most of the applications we, we would be using only mode 1. Okay. So let us see one more register that is PCON which is nothing but power control register and uh, here you can see uh, it is an 8 bit register with uh, the starting bit as a uh, S mod and then GF0 and then we have GF1. Now here S mod is the bit which uh, if, if that particular bit is programmed to 0 then we would be using only the normal baud rate. If that particular bit is programmed to 1 it means that uh, we would be doubling the baud rate okay? and GF1 and GF0 are two general purpose user flex and power down. Now whenever this particular bit is 1 then the processor enters into power down. Now what happens in power down mode? Clock is gated off to all the sections including the peripherals and supply voltage would be reduced to 2 volts only just to keep the data present in the RAM. Okay? So that is what happens in power down mode which is similar to uh, which is similar to standby mode in the PCs. 
okay what happens there if we click on standby then the process would be running whatever the process or whatever the application that we are running before standby uh, would be running why because supply voltage will be will only be given to the ram okay and uh, if this particular bit that is idle bit is programmed to 1 then it makes the processor in idle state and clock signal is available to all the peripherals but not to the cpu it means only the clock signal will be gated off to the processor but all the all the other peripherals would be receiving the clock signal see uh, this is what the formula which we use for calculating the baud rate so here f baud is known to us why because if i want to uh, establish the communication between the processor or controller controller and some other peripheral then uh, i will uh, i will uh, sorry i know what is the baud rate supported by the peripheral so we have to select that baud rate and 2 power s mod s mod for doubling the baud rate as i told you and uh, 32 is a constant i'll tell you what is this 32 f oscillator here is nothing but 11.0592 megahertz and 12 uh, i'll show what is this 12 and then 256 minus th1 as i told you that we have to use only timer 1 in mode 2 for generating the baud rate okay why because here we have only timer 1 and then as uh, the maximum value here is 256 which is only in case of auto reload mode so that is why we have to use this uh, timer 1 in auto reload mode for generating the baud rate see this is uh, this is what the uh, this is how the internal hardware looks like where the crystal frequency is given or through uh, divide by 12 circuit and this 921.6 kilohertz will be given to uart internally in uart we have a divide by 32 circuit therefore it will divide the incoming frequency 921.6 kilohertz by 32 and the output frequency 28800 hertz will be given as an input to or as a clock input to the timer 1 so that is why we can only set the baud rate with the help of timer 1 but not with timer 0 okay and these are the baud rates which are uh, already calculated for 9600 4800 2400 and 1200 in hexadecimal format okay by using the formula formula which i have shown previously that is this so as we know a small should be zero and here it is constant a oscillator we know that 12 is a constant 256 is constant and we know what is the baud rate that uh, we are going with therefore we have to find out th1 so after finding out th1 we have to load that value into th1 thank you and uh, in the next session we will discuss about interrupts